Okay, uh, I just turned on recording, so we are recording. And then uh, when I'm done here, I'll uh, post this up on YouTube and send you the link for it. Awesome, thank you. Okay, well, why don't we go? It looks like we got everybody on board here. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, as we've been talking about, today's session is all about operational planning. So basically, uh, developing operational plans in the system, uh, talk like we talked about the, the nomenclature, what does each level in the pyramid look like? So first thing, let's kind of go through and review the pyramid. So the top of the pyramid is merely your uh, organization, your department, uh, you know, Ryan White, uh, Miami-Dade, basically. Uh, underneath that is the structure. And currently, we have a very simple structure. I'll show it to you here. This is your group screen for, uh, for Ryan White. So it starts out at the top with Ryan White Part A, and then you can see we have uh, the, uh, I, I guess this is a, a consulting company that you guys work with. Uh, contract. It's us. It's us. Okay. That's us. And then uh, what I did for purpose of, of today and the, and the ongoing training is add these two little independent groups down here: training sandbox and tobacco programs for 2023. Because we're actually going to go through today and enter a program, so we can actually see the steps we go through to enter it. Uh, at the end of today, we're going to assign a little bit of homework, and that is to go out and create some sort of a plan. And whether you want to just start entering the state plan in there and use that as an example, or you want to enter just some kind of a fun plan for uh, planning your Christmas vacation or whatever it happens to be. We've, we've gone all over the board with this kind of stuff. Uh, then our next session will be a review uh, of those plans. And typically it's just a very simple process to walk through and see how the plans have been uh, either entered in the system or entered into the uh, template that we've talked about here. So let's go back to our pyramid here. Uh, so each group then has a set of uh, services or initiatives. Uh, services are ongoing things. Initiatives are future programs you're trying to implement. Each service and initiative has a set of goals, the high-level definition. Uh, each goal has a set of objectives, which is that smart, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. So it's a finite target that we set. Uh, and then the activities are the steps we go through to get to the objective here. So that's, that's the pyramid. Uh, and like we've talked about a few minutes ago, uh, there's a lot of different versions of this. This is probably the most common version of the uh, planning pyramid here, but we've seen over the years many, many different variations. So what I'm going to do is just walk through uh, some of the different variations that we've seen, uh, and then you can kind of look at your plans and figure out, you know, do they fit in here or is it a completely different variation? So here's one of them. Uh, the top, what we call services or initiatives, are called strategic priorities. Uh, very common in your strategic plan, typically here. And then we have goals, uh, strategies where we have objectives, uh, and then objectives where we have activities. So those, I think, are kind of a, a little bit backwards in my nomenclature. I typically think of strategies being how we get to objectives. But again, it's just naming. Uh, strategic areas is a, is a pretty good definition of the uh, service or initiative. Uh, the goals, uh, outcome objectives, I like that terminology because the objective is what is the outcome we're trying to achieve here, and then the strategies to get to the outcome objectives. So that's a pretty good uh, definition here. Priorities, goals, objectives, and action steps, a uh, pretty common one. Action steps is probably the, the, the most common uh, variation we see on activities here. Priority areas, goals, again, strategies at the objective level, and then action steps. Priorities, goals, objectives, and strategies. That's a pretty good one. Uh, strategies at the top level. Maybe not too bad. Uh, strategic objectives. I kind of like that for goals. It's a higher level uh, objective, if you will. Uh, and then objectives and action steps. So these are just some of the many, many examples that we've seen over time. So a lot of people will you know, send us a plan and we'll take a look at it and figure out how it structures into the system. And the plan may look what, like what they have here, or it could be into the, the standard format that you see uh, in the pyramid. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of go through and look at each of the different levels of the pyramid. And we're going to go through and look at some of the uh, real uh, excerpts that we've taken from people's plans so you can see real examples from public health of what each level might look like here. So our first level in there, you know, under your uh, organization, there are your groups. Uh, typically, the groups in, in a normal health department, the groups are the structure of the health department. So the divisions, the offices, the programs. Uh, and what we call the primary plans in, in public health. Those are typically the uh, FAB accreditation plans, what they call the FAB six-pack of plans. 
So uh, typically at the stop, you're going to have, you know, whatever your department name is. Uh, in, in your case, it's Ryan White. So the, the department level is a level one. Uh, the levels go from one to 10, by the way. Nobody's ever gotten past uh, five or six, to, to the best of my knowledge in here. Uh, let's say underneath uh, a department, we might have community health division. So that's a level two group reporting up to the level one group. And you can see the hierarchy here. And then maybe you would have WIC reporting up to community health, which would then report to the department. So WIC would be a level three group. You could also move WIC up a level and make it a level two group reporting to the department. So we've seen it uh, multiple different ways. Uh, your strategic plan would typically be at the department level because in fact, it uh, encompasses the whole department here. Your community health improvement plan, again, would be at the department level typically. Uh, we're going to use the same example we used in the uh, previous training, the Tobacco 2023 program. And we're going to actually, at the end, we're actually going to go in and enter that program in the system so you can see everything we have to do to do that. Now, the next level down then under your group are the services or initiatives. So here's just some uh, real life examples from public health across the nation here. So one of them would be healthy moms and babies. These are the, I call the big buckets. This is the, the placeholders, if you will, of what the plans are going to be rolling up to. Readiness for emerging health threats, effective agency processes, access to care, behavioral health and substance abuse, population health, organizational excellence, chronic disease prevention and control, health disparities. And again, for today, we're gonna to use the example of tobacco cessation. So again, if you look at these, these are not really actions. These aren't uh, actual finite part of the active plan. These are the, the buckets that the plans are gonna fit under. Now, the next level down then would be our goals. Uh, goals, again, are the high level definition of what we're trying to accomplish without a lot of detail. So here's some examples. Uh, reduce the risk of infectious disease. Uh, and by the way, the most common structure for a goal is an action verb followed by a couple of words, just giving you a, an idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. Promote safe and sanitary food establishments. Support communities in building resiliency. Enhance healthcare through technology. Drive health in all policy agendas. Reduce the risk of vaccine preventable diseases. Promote public health readiness and response. Promote succession planning and career growth. Integrate a data-driven best practices approach. And then for today, we're going to use again the example, reduce smoking in high schools. Uh, the takeaway from goals is typically you get an idea, let's say reduce smoking in high school. We know what we're trying to accomplish, right? What we don't know at this point in time is specifically which high schools, how much we're trying to reduce it or when we're going to do that. That's when we get down to what we call the, uh, the smart objectives here. And again, the, the nomenclature, our, our nomenclature anyhow, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. Typically, we just focus on specific, measurable, and time-based because if it's not attainable, not realistic, why go after it here? So here's some examples. By December 2023, so there's our time base, we're going to identify two or more strategies. So that's specific, and our measurement would be two or more strategies to collaboratively reduce risky alcohol-related behaviors. By December 2023, 80% of educators and school staff have been exposed to ACE awareness education. By June 2023, provide six training opportunities for first responders who work with individuals in a mental health crisis. By the end of fourth quarter, all programs will have established goals, objectives, and activities to be reported on within the VMSG dashboard. And then today, we're going to focus on reduced smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. So I think if you look at each of these objectives, you'll see that they are specific, uh, they are measurable, and we have a time base associated with them. Now, to get to the objectives, we're going to have our what we call activities or action steps, if you want to. Uh, in the dashboard, there's three types of activities. We're going to go through uh, each of these here. And when we enter it, we'll go into more and more detail. So project-based activity is by far the most common, probably, I don't know, 80 or 85% of what you'll have in the system would be project-based activity. And think of it exactly as that. It's a project, something we're going to complete in a given time frame. In this case, our example, create training content and materials for students and faculty on the dangers of smoking. So the, the activity or the project is to create PowerPoints, to create videos, to create user guides, whatever we need to do the training here. 
Every activity then is going to have some sort of a performance metric or performance measure. And as all that is, is how do I know when I've successfully completed the activity? If you're a third party looking at this activity and you say, okay, they're creating training content materials, how will I know when that's done? Well, when the training content material has been created, it's done. It's pretty simple. We're going to put in a date range, uh, a start and ending date. And again, those can be varied over time as, as life happens. We're going to do team assignments. So we're going to have team and team leads, internal folks, as well as external partner assignments. Uh, and then we're going to have a measurement in this case. And our measurement purely for uh, this activity is percent complete. And there's a couple of different options I'll show you in a few minutes here. Our second type of activity, uh, the QA activity, is unique in a couple of things. Um, number one, it's repetitive. So if it's something you're doing on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, whatever it happens to be, and it's repetitive measuring within that period of time frame, uh, it could be a QA activity. Uh, the activity can be anywhere from weekly to every five years. So you've got a lot of different cycles you can select in there. And the other thing the QA activity does is automatically set the traffic light for you based on the values you provide. So in this case, we're saying we have a, a target of provide nine training sessions each month on the dangers of smoking. Um, if it's nine or greater, we're going to say that's going to set the light to green. And then we're going to pick a number for red. We just happen to pick six on this particular one. So if it's six or less, the light will be red. And then it'll obviously calculate the yellow to be seven or eight in here. Uh, in this particular case, we have a cycle start date and a frequency as opposed to a beginning date and an ending date. The, or the uh, ending date for calculation purposes is automatically calculated based on the month. So in this case, May 1 through May 30th or 31, whatever it happens to be in May. Uh, and then when we move forward into June and June 1 through June 30th, et cetera. So it's always calculating the ending date automatically for you in here. Uh, performance measure in this case is created for you. I'll show you how that happens in a minute. Training sessions provided, measured monthly, and then our green, yellow, and red. Uh, and then again, we would do team assignments and partner assignments. And our measurement's going to be real simple in this case. How many training sessions did we provide? So that'll be the input that you provide uh, as you're updating the uh, activity here. So that's the QA activity. QA is the probably the least used type of activity, uh, but it's really nice to have when you're doing things, again, that are repetitive. Now, our third type of activity, the quantitative measurement activity, is pretty much identical to the project-based activity with the one exception that you actually have a quantity that you're measuring in here. So in this case, we're saying contact all 20 tobacco vendors within a mile of Wayne High School to ensure they're not selling to minors. So the target quantity is, if, if you will, it's our denominator when we're doing calculations. So if I say we've done 10 of the 20 tobacco vendor contacts, obviously you can calculate that to be 50% complete. Uh, we have the date range, just like we do in the project-based activity. Our performance measure, however, because we have a little bit more information, it's calculated for you in here. So the performance measure, or how do we know when we're done, is 20 tobacco vendors contacted between May 1 and June 30th. And then again, we'll do team assignments, partner assignments. And our metric in this case, as you can expect, is just going to be how many vendors did we contact. So this will be the update on this particular activity. So now if we take the, uh, the blue text in each of these screens and put it together in the actual plan, it looks like this. The group we selected was tobacco programs for 2023. Underneath that, we had an initiative called tobacco cessation. Under tobacco cessation, one of the goals was to reduce smoking in high schools. Under that goal, we had one of the objectives was to reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. Uh, and then the activities that we're going to do to get there, create the training content, provide the training sessions, and contact the tobacco vendors. Now, in addition to this portion of the plan, there's a lot more to that plan, and it might be a different goal, like reduce smoking in colleges. And then under that, you might have another objective, reduce smoking at Wright State University by 25% by the end of the school year. So the plan can go on and on and on at, at every different level, uh, but this is what a typical operational plan would look like, again, for tobacco cessation. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a, a template that was created. This was actually created by one of our clients in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and it's a nice tool to be able to develop your operational plan offline before you put it in. Uh, the reason that they created it was they wanted to be able to have, uh, you know, a group of people create a plan and then pass it around to everybody, have everybody's input on it before you put it in the system. 
Uh, not necessary to do, by the way, because once you put it in the system, you can move things around and edit it any way you want to. But this is just a different option to do it. So what we're going to do is actually take the plan that is in this template. Uh, and if I haven't already, I will send you a copy of this uh, template so you have it if you decide to want to use it. Uh, we're going to take what's in this template. And we're actually going to enter it into the system. So first of all, I'm going to go to our template. This is our live operational plan template. It's a Word document here. So if you look at it, it's kind of cool because it says, okay, the top level is our service or initiative. Uh, it gives you a, a quick definition. What bucket of work or priority does this relate to? In this case, tobacco cessation. Our first goal under here, uh, what is your pie in the sky? Again, that's a high level goal. Reduce smoking in high schools. Then we get down to our smart objectives. Specifically, what and when do you hope to accomplish? Uh, our objectives down here. Uh, who is leading the objective? Who will lead the charge here? Our activities, what are the steps you will do to accomplish the objective? You can see the activities here. Uh, then the performance metrics for the activities, who are the, the leads for the activities, uh, and then the target completion dates in here. So what we're going to do is take this plan and we're going to actually enter it into the system now. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is highlight tobacco cessation. Uh, you can right click and copy. I just like to use keyboard shortcuts. Control C is copy. Now I'm going to tab back over to the dashboard. I'm going to go down and select the group Tobacco 2023. The next thing I'm going to do is go down because I'm going to enter the service or initiative. So by selecting Tobacco 2023, when I look at the services or initiative, it's going to be specifically those for the Tobacco 2023 group, as you can see down here. I can either click on the plus button to add it, or I can click on this big guy right here. Same thing as the plus button. Uh, Control V as in Victor is paste. So I'm just going to paste it in there. I'll go ahead and save that. Every time you make a change on the bottom, just, just FYI, uh, everything you see up at the top basically is, is the on the server. Um, so it's the, the, the high level. Anything down here on the bottom is actually on your desktop. So until you save it, it doesn't get pushed up to the server. Uh, and this, by the way, is how we can have thousands of users on the system uh, through the multi-user concept here. Now, for now, we're going to consider tobacco cessation to be a, a new program that we're implementing here. So I'm going to call it an initiative means I'm going to hit this checkbox here. And again, I'm going to save it. Uh, and you'll notice the initiative checkbox up here goes in. Uh, again, the difference between a service and initiative is typically it's this to start with. And secondly, an initiative typically has future dates as opposed to uh, current dates in it. A uh, service would have current dates in it. Now, there's another option down here that you see at the bottom right, hide service. Uh, if we've been doing this program, let's say for a year, and we've, we've gone through the entire program for a school year, and we wanted to be able to archive that to keep it handy, uh, I can just click on the, this checkbox here and save it. And you'll notice it grays out. What happens at this point in time is anybody who is an org admin or a manager level user can get to this program. They can uh, print it. They can do all kinds of stuff with it uh, and get to the information for, for archive purposes here. Anybody who's a normal user who would just typically be doing updates in the system doesn't have access to that. So they wouldn't even see it. When you generate a report and it would contain a hidden service in here, you're going to get a dialog. Again, if you're a manager or an org admin user, you're going to get a dialog that says, do you want to include hidden data in there? So you can generate the reports if you're at that level. If you're a normal user, you won't even see the dialog box in here. Go ahead. And Fred, uh, Fred? Yes, ma'am. Um, OK, so for the on this screen, it, just so I understand um, uh, as far as entering, what you're saying is that what's below this lined box right. is where we actually work. Yes. And so like where the check is next to where it says tobacco cessation, um, where it says initiative, like the you wouldn't that you can't interact with that part of the screen. I can't interact with this up here, no. What I can interact right. so, with this down here. So yeah. we're, we're, working area is below that box exactly okay gotcha okay yeah, and, and again then what happened when you hit the save button everything that's down here gets pushed up to the server instantaneously uh so that's again that's how we manage the ability to have thousands of users uh, on the system here okay okay thank you yeah on, on every screen you'll have this exactly the same thing everything that's down below the the blue here the the grid up here uh is your working area and then by hitting save you push it up to the server Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yes. Good question, by the way. Okay. Um, now let's go back. And so we have tobacco cessation as our initiative. Let's grab the first goal here. 
uh, reduce smoking in high school. So again, control C, tab back over. Now, because I've selected tobacco cessation, the goals tab is going to be specifically the goals for tobacco cessation. Again, I can click on this or I can click on the plus button here, uh, control V to paste our goal in here. At this level, we also set the traffic light. So I've got a couple of choices here. I can either just cycle through the lights with my mouse or I can use a little drop down here. Uh, different people like different things, so we put them both in there. Uh, again, the, the green indicates things are moving along as expected. Now, remember we said this is an initiative, so it's a new program. So probably everything would be green because we haven't had a chance to uh, have anything go wrong yet, if you will. Uh, yellow would be when something is potentially getting in the way. You know, you heard about this thing called COVID a couple of years ago. You don't know what it's going to do to the uh, program. So you might mark it as yellow and say, hey, we've heard about this thing called COVID. It may be taking up a lot of resources, whatever it happens to be. Uh, red would be, you know, you got into COVID and every resource in the department has gone to handling COVID versus handling the stuff in the department. So you mark it as red. Again, put a note down in there as to what that is. Uh, gold would be successful completion. Now, something like reduce smoking in high schools probably will never get to gold uh, unless you get to zero, obviously. Then you can say, hey, we did a great job. We've completed the program in here. But gold is something that is more of a project. And once you've completed the project in a given time frame, you can mark it as gold. And that says, hey, we're done with that. So that's your traffic lights. A um, couple other things over here. From the goals, objectives, and activities, you got the couple options here. Number one is our notes. So I've got a couple options here. I can just type in a note. This is a test note. I can save that. The other thing you can do is put a, a date, time, and person stamp on the note. So if I click on this little button right here, you can see it puts in the date, the time, and system admin is my username in here. And then I can say, Now, the, the benefit of that is because you're not going to be the only person working on this particular entity here. So if you want to put a note in there that says, hey, Fred changed the light to yellow because, um, you know, this thing called COVID or uh, because John is going to be retiring or whatever it happens to be in there. So putting a date and timestamp note in there is nice. If I hit it again, it's going to put another date and timestamp above it. So the, the latest note is always going to be at the, uh, the top up there. Again, save that. The other thing we have is the ability to add data sources. Uh, data sources is a place that you're typically going to go to get the information to update the plan, typically a website. So if I click on here, it's going to pop open this little window. Um, what I would typically put in here, but I don't have the exact link to it, so I'm just going to put the CDC website in here. So, But we might use the CDC. CDC Smoking Cessation Fast Facts webpage. I can't type and uh, talk at the same time. Now, when you put in the link, you have to start it with uh, HTTP or HTTPS colon slash slash, and we'll just put in the CDC website. I don't want, there is, that webpage exists, but I don't have the link handy here. So uh, HTTP www.cdc.gov, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, you'll notice what happens down here, and again, I'm going to save that. <clears throat> what happens down here is the description comes into here, and over here comes this link. It's a little chain link if you look at it. When I click on the chain link, it's going to pop open a new browser window and take me, in this case, to the CDC website. So if you have a data source to update the program, whatever that data source might be coming from, uh, you got it at your fingertips. So you go grab that data, move back over to the other tab, put it in the system. So it's just a, a nice thing to have, if you will. So these are the uh, the optional fields, and you'll see all these on the objectives and activity screen. Now let's and go back. Fred, yes. Um, so for the data source, it's just that's just one link per uh, per um, goal. What one? one yeah, for, for each goal or objective or activity, so you can have a separate link for each one. Oh, you can have a so you can have a separate link for. Like as you drill down, you can. Yeah, so down here at the objective, you can see there's a data source field down at the bottom at the for the objective, same oh. for the activities. Okay, super, thanks. Yep. Okay, so reduce smoking in high school is one of our goals, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, we have some other goals. Here we go. So reduce smoking in colleges. Let's go ahead and add that in there. Control C, back over here. I'm just going to hit the plus button to open up the bottom. 
Control V. I'll save that. Now, at this point in time, I could again put in notes, put in a data source. If I had a different uh, data source, I can change the traffic light. Back over here, I think we had a third one. Uh, reduce smoking in public areas. Control C. Back over. Um, hit the plus button down here. Control V. We'll go ahead and save that. So now we have our three goals in there. Um, one of the things, if you get a lot of uh, planning elements on a page, that's why we put this little arrow down. What this is is drill down. So remember, whichever uh, planning element I have selected here and I go to the next tab, it's going to be the tab for that planning element. So I can either go click on Reduce Smoking in High Schools and then click the Objectives tab, or I can save one mouse click by clicking on the drill down for Reduce Smoking in High Schools. So it does both things. It selects it and then goes to the next tab. So that's what that little arrow on the right is for. Uh, so down here, then, we have uh, our objective for, now down at the bottom, it's something I think we talked a little bit about. This is the cookie crumb. So basically, it says your organization, uh, which group you're in, down here, which initiative, tobacco cessation, the goal, reduce smoking in high schools, and then there's nothing in the objectives or activities yet. But sometimes you'll see a screen and, you know, they kind of all look the same. So then down here, you can just kind of look and say, where exactly am I? Or, you know, you're working on something. You get a phone call, 15 minutes later, you come back and say, where the heck was I? You can just go down and look at the uh, uh, bottom of the screen down there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, here to open our or to add our objective. We'll go back over to here and scroll back up to the top. So our first objective here is to reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. Copy that. Let's see. Go over here. I'm going to enter that. Control V. So this, again, is our finite target. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Saved it. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a person in here, going to be our objective lead. So I'll click on the drop down. The reason nobody shows up in this window is because there's nobody assigned by default to the Tobacco 2023 group. It's a training group. So I would hit show all users up here. It's going to go ahead and just bring in the, the group of folks. I'll just go ahead and pick Christina as our objective lead, save that. So as you notice, she shows up down here. I'll save that. And then she shows up up here as well. So Christina's got two jobs. Number one is she's the uh, program manager, project manager to get us to this 25% reduction. Secondly, she's going to input the data down here. Now, you'll notice the title says objective percent done, which is really not what we're trying to do. We're looking for a percent reduction. So I can change that by clicking on the title here. Pop this open. We're going to say... Um, percent reduction. My measurement unit will still be percent. Uh, if I wanted to measure something that is counting widgets of some sort, uh, training sessions, tobacco vendors, contact, whatever, I can use decimal. So instead of calculating percent, I'm going to calculate decimal. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just say I'm going to calculate percent. So now you notice the title changes to percent reduction, and my field is going to be whatever that is. So we're going to go ahead and say it's 20 for now, and then update it. So we're sitting up here at a 20% reduction uh, based on this infra down here. So Christina's job is number one, project manager, get us to the 25% reduction and to keep this up to date. Here's that data source field again. So if she had a data source, uh, maybe it's Wayne High School's webpage. Maybe they monitor that, wouldn't that be nice? So they're monitoring the percent reduction. So she can just go put the data source to the Wayne High School webpage, click on that link, grab that value, put it into here, and she's done updating the particular objective. Um, okay, so that is our, our objective here, and we've got the objective lead assigned. Now, remember, Christina is also going to be the one who gets the email notification to come back in and update this through the real-time planning interface. Uh, we have another objective down here, reduce smoking at Desert Vista High School. So control C, go back here. We'll go ahead and add another objective. Control V. Uh, Bob has a question. Yep. Uh, you're muted. Yeah. Um, we have uh, a working template that Christina has already mentioned in the chat. Okay. And am I understanding that we can simply copy and paste from that template into the some of these fields directly? We don't have to re-enter it. We can simply just block and copy. Yep, absolutely. Okay. That's the way most people do it. 
And number two is, is that when we start getting into the measurements, we may not have a website, but we may have a person, hypothetically, let's say we're talking about a particular activity either from the Department of Health or from Part A, where we have a person who is going to be generating these data on a monthly basis or a semi-monthly basis or a quarterly basis, like, for example, Frank, okay, who is going to be generating some of these and some of this information. Um, do, how, do we simply indicate that Frank, the data will come from Frank, or do we just depend on Frank to enter the data? Well, you could do both. Um, you could you could set Frank as the objective lead so that he could enter the data, or you could put his name down there in the data sources, just put Frank's name without a link in there. Uh, but when we get down to the activity level, then Frank, if he's an external partner, could be added as an external partner, or if he's a team member, he can be added as a team member. So there's several different ways to go about that. So basically, that the point is, is there's like essentially a hyperlink to Frank as yeah. opposed to a hyperlink to a website. Exactly. Yeah, it wouldn't really be a link. It would just be an identification in the in the source field. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking metaphorically, but yeah, yeah. This, this. Okay. All right. Thank you for clearing that up. That makes a lot of sense. No. Thank you. Okay. Let's go ahead now and assign our objective lead for this one. We'll pick. In fact, let's just pick on Frank here. It's pick on Frank day, I guess. And we'll save that. Okay, so now we have our two objectives. Again, I'm going to go back to my first objective, reduce smoking at Wayne High School. I'm going to go ahead and click on the drill down arrow here. Go ahead and add our first activity in here. Oops, where I go? Here we go. So our first activity is create the training content. You notice I put in brackets here, project-based, QA, and QM. So we'll go through uh, examples of each of those here. So create the training content, control C. And by the way, Bob, that's exactly how most people, they have a plan and a PDF or a Word document, copy and paste, copy and paste. I do that all the time. I can put somebody's entire strategic plan in an hour. So it's really a pretty simple process once you get uh, familiar with it. Oops. Okay, so our first activity, uh, create training content materials for students and faculty on dangerous smoking. Here's the di different activity types. Project-based, we're going to use this one as project-based because, you know, think about that. That is a project. Uh, the QA and a QM activity. Now, the project-based activity is the only one where you create the performance metric. And again, how do I know when I've successfully completed the activity? Well, we just happen to have that, so I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me type anymore. Control-C. We'll go back over here. Control-V. So the training content material has been created. Next thing we're going to do is assign a date. So let's go ahead and say uh, December 1 through uh, December 31 is our date range in here. I'll go ahead and save that. So now what we've done is we've got the activity, we've got the performance metric, we've got the, the date range in here. And again, our measurement over here is going to be, at this point, is going to be percent complete. We're going to go back and look. Well, one of the things to, uh, every activity has got this little wizard button on it. The wizard is kind of more details on the activity. So let's kind of look at that. Uh, click on the wizard. First of all, you can enter the dates in the wizard, or you can enter them down here. Either one's identical. But these are the, the different data entry types. So the, the default is 0 to 100%, as you can see over here. Um, let's say I'm, I'm actually entering this data in here, and I say, um, let's go ahead and do it this way. Chapter 1 of 4. So if I said that, that indicates to me that I'm about 25% done. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as 25%, and I'll save that. So now what I've done is, is updated my status to be 25% complete. So that's one of the options is your percent done. My next one might say Chapter 204, mark it as 50%, 3, 4, whatever you have in there. Now, at the options, though, that I can select here, let's say I have a – maybe I'm going to do this entire content – in a day or a week or something, and I don't necessarily need to be able to uh, measure it by percent complete. I have a couple other choices down here. Uh, the most common one would be complete. And when I do that, uh, you'll notice that the percent complete changes to a checkbox here. So if I have that, I'll go ahead and save that. When I have a checkbox in here and I click it, first of all, when it's unchecked, it's equal to 0%. When it's checked, it's equal to 100%. 
On a project-based activity, when it goes to 100%, it automatically sets the traffic light to gold. Again, it's a project and it's completed is what we're saying, meaning that's what the, the meaning of the gold traffic light is in here. So in this case, we're saying we're 100% complete. Uh, the other option you saw was yes, no. Sometimes you'll have an activity that basically is a question that can be answered with yes and no. So you can mark it as yes, no. Same exact thing. If it's no, it's 0%. If it's yes and checked, it's 100%. So we'll go ahead and leave that in here for now. The next thing we're going to be able to do then is, again, here's your data source down here. If you have a specific data source uh, for this in here, I don't know if you would or not. Or, again, you can put a name in there or a description of what you're looking at, whatever you want to have. But, Fred? Yes. Um, so the light at the top is still green, even though this one is gold. So what what does the light? Oh. I haven't saved it yet. Remember, everything oh. at the bottom is just temporary until I save it. Oh, I see. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, good good question, though. That's exactly what happens. So once I oh, see, okay. you'll see. Now, just, just as a, uh, an option here, on the project-based activity, the traffic light sets to gold uh, automatically if you get to 100%. But if this is something that's going to be ongoing, a different type of an activity or something, you can go back in and change the traffic light back. So maybe set it back to a green knowing it's ongoing or something. Uh, it just defaults to 100% because it says the project is complete, basically. But you have the option to set it back if you want to. And you'll see on the QA activity, you don't have that option. It automatically sets based on the values. So the next thing we're going to want to do then is assign uh, team members and team leads. So I'll click on here. Again, the reason nobody shows up is because I'm in the tobacco group. So I can click on uh, either use the drop down and pick people out of a specific group or if I click the little black X, it just says open it up to the whole department. So we have three columns, team members. You can have as many of those as you want. We're going to go ahead and assign Christina as a team member. And we're going to pick on Frank again here and make him the team lead. So the three columns, team member is exactly that. These are the folks creating the training content. The team lead is guiding the team, if you will. So Frank is the, the lead. Uh, and then email notification. Uh, email notification says that Frank is going to get an email on a regular basis that you guys determine uh, anywhere between weekly and monthly. Uh, and that email is going to give him a link right back into this activity to update this activity. Now, you can also give uh, Christina the email notification as well. So you can have as many as you want. Typically, you want to have one person as your email notification because that's the person who's, again, leading the team, would understand the timeline and the exact status of the, uh, the process here. Over here in the right hand column. Uh, yes. Sorry, question. How do you uh, determine or how do you put the email to be sent weekly or monthly? Uh, I'll show you that in a few minutes if you'll remind me after we get out of this section here. Okay, perfect. Right. It's real, real simple. Okay. Um, FTE column over here is, uh, again, typically used during budgeting cycles and things like that. But what you're trying to determine is, what is the human cost for doing this activity? Uh, the FTE is, is, you know, zero to one, basically. And you can set a different FTE value for each person. So during the time frame of the activity, we're going to say that, uh, you know, maybe Frank is a, a 0.1 FTE or 10% of his time. And Christina is a 0.1 FTE. So, uh, I, again, it's not used very often unless you're trying to say, how much is this costing us to do? So you're looking at grants or you're looking at uh, budgets and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit save down here. Uh, now you'll notice. Uh, uh, question on, on that screen. Uh -huh. um, the previous. So, yeah, for the, right, for the, for the activity, uh, the team members and leaders. Uh -huh. So those are um, like not everyone who's connected to all of our activities would would be or would even need to be a licensed user so would we be able to add quote unquote team members who who don't have access to the system yeah and that's the the next thing i'm going to go over is the external oh. partners oh okay yeah okay that's that makes you're, you're a good lead, you're a good lead-in person christina <laughs> yeah. okay so the the internal team members these these have to be system users to be on this list here so the L indicates lead, the T indicates team member, the blue around the L indicates email notification. So you've got the internal team. External partners, that's what you were talking about. Anybody who's not a system user who you want to attach to the activity, you can do it through here. Now, 
Currently, there's no external partners in the system. We will, uh, in a future training, go through adding a very simple process off the main menu, go to partners, and you can just add uh, external partner organizations and the contacts within there. So what you can do is assign the, uh, excuse me, the external partners and the uh, external partner contacts to a specific activity. At that point, basically what it is is just a reference. Now, if those external partners at some point in time, you need them to actually come in and do the updates, then we have to make them a system user. They have to have a license to be able to do that. <clears throat> but for now, you can attach those partners to here. Uh, there's a lot of reports that say, you know, uh, where is this partner attached throughout our whole plan or through our, our whole organization? Lots of different things that you can do with that. But it's really nice to have those external partners designated in there. So, you know, at this point in time, uh, like Bob was talking about, you can go in and say, oh, I'm going to work with Fred Erickson at VMSG Dashboard on this particular project. So it gives you the reference point, plus you'll have all their contact information, everything in there. So, um, yeah, this is the uh, the project-based activity. Again, you got a couple options with the uh, uh, zero to 100% is the default. Then you can either say yes, no, or complete over here as your uh, data input. And you can add the external partners as well as the team members in here. Next, our next activity is going to be the QA activity. Again, remember, this is the repetitive one. So provide nine training sessions each month. Control C, go back over to here, hit the plus button. Open it up, control V, provide the nine training sessions. Now I'm just gonna hit the drop down here and change this down to the QA activity. Pops open a wizard for me. First thing I'm gonna do is set my frequency. We said we're gonna do nine training sessions each month. So here's my monthly. Again, you can look at it, it goes anywhere from weekly to every five years. Typically you're gonna use this activity if it's you know monthly or quarterly, but if you get over that, then Plans tend to change more often than that, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, especially like a five-year cycle, which would be for like your strategic plan or something. Uh, the start date is the beginning of that monthly cycle. So today we're going to say 12-6 of 23. We'll go ahead and leave that in there. Uh, my green value is when I get to nine training sessions, we know that's green. And then I'm going to pick a random value here. I'm just going to say six for red. So now what it's saying is if it's greater than or equal to nine, it's going to set the traffic light to green. If it's less than or equal to six, it's going to set it to red. If it's between uh, six and nine, it's going to set it to yellow. Now there's another option here. Uh, think about a golf score. Lower is better, right? So I can flip this around, click on that little button. It'll be less than or equal to. Uh, then I can put in, let's say a three is green and a six is red. So if it's equal to or less than three, it's good. So there are some things that uh, less is better. Uh, just as an FYI, when you decide to change that, if you already have data in here, uh, erase the data fields first, the nine and the six, then flip it over and then put in the six and the nine. What the system tries to do is make sure that you don't have a, a higher number, you know, bigger than a, a lower or a, a lower number, bigger than a higher number or something like that. So just clear the fields, change it over there. It'll flip both of these around uh, and then put in your new data values in there. The other thing you're going to put in here is a uh, metric type. So in this case, we're going to say our metric is training sessions provided. And I'll go ahead and save that. And this is where the um, performance metric is created for you. So training sessions provided, measured monthly, and then our green, yellow, and red values. Here's our start date down here. Uh, when I save this, uh, not the first time, but the next time I save this, after I put in a data value, it's going to ask me, do I want to update the cycle start date? So right now you notice the traffic light is red because it's uh, basically zero. It's sitting below six. I'm going to go ahead and make this an eight. Now, when I click off of that, you notice the traffic light down here turns yellow. Uh, when I save that, here's the, uh, do you want to update the cycle start date? So if I had entered, let's say eight was the, the total I'm going to do for uh, December in here, and that was the end of it. So I can say, yeah, I want to update the cycle start date. I can either say current, meaning pick today's date as my new cycle start date, which would be the same. I can say select. It just gives me a little field with the next monthly. Uh, it would be January 1st would be in, in there. Uh, and I can put in a new date if I want to. So I can select any date. So anytime you update this particular type of activity, it automatically asks you, do you want to update the cycle start date? I'm just going to go ahead and say no for now. And it saves our activity. Uh, Again, the cycle start date, you notice there's no ending date, so it's going to calculate uh, 1, 5 of, of uh, 24 is going to be our calculated end date down here. 
Again, we can go in and we can add activity leaders and team members and activity partners in here. We got our notes field, we got our time and date stamp, we got our data source. So that's our um, QA activity. Let's go ahead and add the third one, the QM activity, which is contact all 20 tobacco vendors, control C, back to here, go ahead and plus button, paste it in there, control V. Again, we're gonna call this a QM activity, pops open the wizard. Let's go ahead and just pick the same uh, December 1 through December 31st here. Uh, we know that our target number is 20, so that's easy. Uh, decimal or dollars. This is the type of activity you would do uh, if you're managing grant dollars, if you're managing budget dollars, anything to do with dollars. Basically, if I select dollars, it just makes everything, you know, dollar sign with two decimal points and that sort of thing on there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say decimal because we're counting tobacco vendors. And in this case, we're going to say tobacco vendors contacted. Couple of uh, data entry types down here. The first one is enter a value to add to total. And that's what we have selected. I'll go ahead and save that for now. I'll go ahead and save the activity. So down here we have add to. Um, so let's say I put in 10 and it says my running total is now 10 and it calculates the percent complete to be 50 based on the uh, target number that we put in there. So this is add to total. So what, what this means is if I'm contacting these tobacco vendors, let's say I'm going out once a week, and at the end of the week, I want to go in and say, okay, I did five more this week. It's just keeping a running total for you and calculating your, your percent done at that point in time. Um, the other option that you saw in there was enter a total value. So let's say I'm going to go out and contact all these folks in one day or one week, and I just want to go in and enter a value at the end of the week here. So you notice the summary field went away. It says, here's your total currently is 15. Uh, I can just say, okay, I put in, I contact all 20 tobacco vendors, calculates it to be 100% done. So those are the two options for uh, data entry in there. Now there's another option in here, uh, and that is what we call a zero target. I'm gonna go ahead and select this guy back. And if I put in a zero target, now the reason you would do that is if you have no target. So, I, you know, where this was actually created was a uh, health department in Ohio who does plumbing inspections uh, as part of their, their work. Uh, they don't have a target number to do, but they want to know at the end of the month, how many did we do? So if I put a zero target in there and save it, you notice the percent calculation goes away. We no longer have a denominator, so you can't divide by zero. So what it's just saying that uh, totally we have done 20, you know, plumbing inspections or whatever it happens to be, uh, from the beginning of the month until now. So at this point in time, we're saying we have 20. I can either use the add the total and keep the running total here, or I could just at the end of the month put in a total value with the other option in there. So that is the third activity, the Q. Uh, Fred? Yes. Sorry. Um, and how how does the stoplight work for these activities? Uh, these The project-based activity with the exception of the gold light and this activity are manually set. So you are determining, you know, uh, are we on track? Are we behind schedule? Did something bad go wrong? And anytime you change a traffic light, it's a good idea to put a note down in here, uh, particularly a time and date stamp note in here that just says, hey, um, found out that John's leaving the organization next week. Don't have anybody to replace him. Set the traffic light to red, something along that line. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, okay so those are the, the three activities that we believe are going to get us to our objective of reducing uh, smoking by 25%. If we go back and look at this plan in the pyramid again, and we've seen this before, but let's go through it again. So our group was Tobacco 2023. The initiative we were working on is Tobacco Cessation. And again, you can have, as you can see, multiple groups, multiple initiatives. Uh, each initiative can have multiple goals, reduce smoking in high schools, reduce smoking at Wayne High School, uh, and then the steps we're going to go through. Now, Again, the reason the pyramid uh, uh, is the way it is, is if you think about this, let's say we're working uh, our strategic plan as the group. Uh, let's say we have four initiatives as our strategic priorities uh, within our strategic plan. Each of those initiatives has four goals. Each of those goals has four objectives. Each objective has four activities. If you do the math, that's 256 activities. That's why the pyramid. So it does really get wide at the bottom. And that's not necessarily going to be every plan. Some plans will just have one, one, one all the way down. But a typical plan, you know, will have, 
you know, four of each maybe, and you're going to get down and have a pretty good plan. Now, this is the reason why you want to ideally assign uh, that real-time planning, those uh, email notifications to the people who are actually doing this, because you don't want to have one person having to update 256 activities, you know, every cycle period. So that is the plan. Now, that was what I wanted to go over today. Uh, it's just, you know, how to, how to enter a plan in the system. What I would like each of you to do for our next session, which I believe is tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, let me look at my calendar here. Yeah, I think we'll pitch it tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, we have tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock your time is just a review. Yeah. Um, what I would ask is each person, um, do you guys already have that template that I showed you? Uh, which, which template? The uh, the template that I was copying and pasting from the operational plan. Template. Yeah, we, we have, have one. We have one already. We, have, we don't have that, but we have our own, which is almost identical. Oh, okay. Identical. That's fine. We've already put all of our entire plan into a similar template. Okay. Uh, what I would ask everybody to do is either uh, create a little plan and, and basically, you know, under under the training group if you want to or uh, up into the, the group somewhere, create a, a single um, service or initiative with a single goal or a single objective. And if you can, think of a way to use the three different types of activities put those in there just so you can kind of get your your mind around that and then what i'd like to do tomorrow afternoon is actually just go through and quickly review those plans give you a little feedback on the uh, typically uh, and i'll tell you this in advance where most people have issues is around smart objectives so remember it's got to be something specific that you're trying to accomplish there's got to be a measurement associated with it so how many are you going to do or what percentage are you going to reduce what percentage you're going to increase uh, and then it's got to be time-based Time-based meaning uh, annually, by the end of the year, by the end of the month, whatever it happens to be in there is time-based. And then think about the activities is, okay, I've got, a, I've got a target with my objective. What are the things I can do kind of sequentially that will get me to that objective? Now, if you guys already have your plan in place and you want to just take one of the initiatives and take part of it and build it into there, fine. Now, if you put it in the training group, we can move it to the, the basic plan. So if you want to play around in the sandbox where you can't hurt anything, feel free to do that. If you want to put it up into the uh, a plan group, please feel free to do that as well. And Fred, um, is, are there instructions on how we sign into the database? Or I'm not even sure how to get into the database. Oh, I thought I sent that out to everybody already. When we went through the, uh, the intro training, it was how to get into your a database. But, oh, you don't have, and I just, I just didn't read it thoroughly. That I'll, I can, I'll look for that. Though. Okay, there's a, there's a PDF that I sent out that has the instructions. Basically, uh, you go to login.vmsg-board.com, hit the send button, put in your email address, it'll send you your login credentials, and then you go log in and go. Gotcha. Okay. And if you don't have that, just email me, and I'll, I'll send you a copy of it. Sometimes they okay. get in, in the uh, email, so. Again, Fred, it's login.vmsg-dashboard.com? Yes. Or if you just go to vmsg-dashboard.com, you'll see a link in the top right corner up there. I'll tell you what, let me, let me just walk you through the process real quick. It's simple. It'll just take a minute. So to log out, you hit the little red button up here, log off. And now this is the VMSG homepage. Here's the link. So just go to vmsg-dashboard.com, .net, .org, whatever you want. Uh, up here, it says already a user log in here. Click on that. And then the next thing you're going to do is hit the send button here. It says send me my login credentials. Oops. If I could spell it would be better. And then I'm going to hit send again. You're going to get a little dialogue. It says success, hopefully. I said I'm going to get a little. And this is just to the training, the training site? <laughs> Uh, no, this is your live website when you log into it. Okay. So the, the, well, yeah, what I'm logging into is my, my site. If you get this little success dialogue, that means it sent you an email. If you don't get that email within about a minute because it goes out immediately, uh, check your spam folder or something along that line because it may have gotten caught up in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. So I'm going to have an email that has my user ID and my password. You don't have to remember your user ID, by the way. You can use your email address as your user ID 
you do have to know your password. I'm going to go ahead and click this login button up here. It's going to bring that same dialogue. I'm going to go ahead and put in my user ID, uh, my password, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and log in. Let me just go ahead and change that here. Put in my other login. I'm going to hit login. Um, you guys have not been assigned as leads yet, so you won't get this dialogue. It'll just take you to the main menu. Now, when you get here, the first thing I would recommend is changing your password because the password you're going to have is going to be a crazy cryptic string of characters you don't want to remember. So just hit the uh, password button here. Copy and paste out of the email the password that's in there. Put in your new password, verify, and hit update, and you're all set to go. That's in, it. In. No, magic. And then the other question um, was uh, going back to Abril's question about um, who gets the emails. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Let me, let, let me do that here. Okay. So the top uh, main menu, the top right, this a gray one up here is my main menu. I'm going to go down to settings down here, this crazy little tool thing here, and notifications tab. So here's your notifications. Yours is probably turned off right now. So you're going to go turn it on. You're going to say, when do we want them to go out? Most people select one week of the month. So I've got week two of the month selected, but you can say weeks one and three or weeks two and four. I can say every week. I can say the last day of the month, or I can say a specific date of the month. So I can say the 15th of every month. So you pick what you want there. Uh, if I pick like week two, it's going to say which day of the week or days. I could pick multiple days if I want to here. So I'm going to go ahead and say every Tuesday of the second week of the month, and what these are is why is the email going out? Three criteria. Number one is if the person hasn't been in in the last 30 days and updated their stuff, they're going to get an email. I can uncheck that if I don't want that in there. If I've got anything that's calculated to be behind schedule, the calculation is beginning date, ending date, percent complete. If it's calculated you're behind schedule, you're going to get an email. Overdue says I've got an activity that should have been completed before today, and it's not yet 100% complete. You can turn, you know, any of these, however you want it done, you can turn these on and off, but most people leave all three of them on there. So that's how you set the, uh, the notifications. Now, one other thing I did want to show you, and thanks for reminding me here, uh, on the same screen here, the synonyms button. So here's the, the pyramid here, the organization, group, service, initiative, goal, objective, and activity. What you're saying here is I can change, um, you guys had, I think, objectives, you had strategies maybe or something like that. What did you say? Um, yeah, so if I wanted this to say strategy on every report, every web page, everything else, I could just change this to strategy. And now what happens is when I generate a report, instead of saying objective 1.1.1, it's going to say strategy 1.1.1. And you can change these. Uh, now, to know that it does affect every report in the system. In your case, you're basically going to have one major plan. So you might want to... Uh, reorganize these the way you want them. And you can change them back at any point in time, too. So let's say you're going to, you know, you got your report already, it's in there, and you want to generate the report, or you got your plan in there, you want to generate the report, go in and change these the way you want them, generate your report, and then come change it back if you want to. You can change them, uh, and they, they take effect immediately when you change them. What else? If I can ask, th this hierarchy you have here in terms of synonyms, uh, Christina, what, it, what, it, what, what I think I'm understanding here is that we can go in here and reset this hierarchy based on the way we are currently organizing our integrated plan and basically, does that apply to anybody who's entering data, or does it only apply to the reports that we're generating by this user? It applies to two things. No, it, it applies to, for your organization, every report that's generated will print the synonym versus the, the left uh, value in there. And uh, what we call VMSD public, where you generate the web page, same thing, where it says group, it'll say whatever you put in there for group. So that, yeah, it does not affect the, the, the basic system as far as the tabs and that kind of stuff. They're all the same. So it's just, just for generating reports. 
Okay. Well, how do we generate the tabs for the system? How do we how do we do our own hierarchy for the way that we are doing our integrated plan? Well, basically, you're going to have to match what's in your plan to the tabs that are in there. That that, that makes sense. I I I I understand. You okay so with that? What, what, we, it, it's just it's just your inter on the left is is your internal structure, and on the right is what we call it. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it, Christine. And again, the only effect is on reporting and on uh, VMSD public. It doesn't affect the tabs or what they're called as you're entering data in the system. Okay, we we can work with that. That yeah. that that makes sense. And as you're going through it, as you're entering stuff, and you have any questions about any of that, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to to do this. I've been doing this for many many years, and I'm sure I can help you. Okay, well, I guess I'll see everybody uh, tomorrow at uh, four o'clock. Um, please uh, take a few minutes to generate something. If you if you generate it on a, a template that's offline uh, or a piece of paper, or whatever you want, what I'm going to do is give you control and actually walk you through entering the plan in the system. Some people learn better by you know actually doing it. So if you want to do that, or if you want to go in and enter it uh, in the training group, feel free to do that. And again, like I say, if you enter in the training group. And we want to apply it to the the uh, the plan, uh, the final plan. We can move that from the training group real easily. I'll show you how to do that. So you know, play in the training group. It's kind of offline. Can't hurt anything in there. Uh, let's get everybody with a plan in there. We'll review them tomorrow, uh, and then we'll move on to the next Friday training session, which is performance monitoring tools. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for your time. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, Fred. And you'll send me the recording, right? So I can forward it to Dan. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. I... <laughs> thank you. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye.